Look at the front wheels of this F1 car. They look broken. Why is the outside tire turning more than the inside tire? At first, it makes no sense, but there is an absolutely genius reason for it. So let me explain. When setting up a car steering, there are three ways to do it. Parallel steering, positive Ackerman, and negative or anti Ackerman. You may think that when you turn the wheel of your car, both wheels turn the same amount, which is parallel steering, but they don't. And here's why. When turning, the inside wheel of the car is moving along a tighter arc than the outside. So the inside wheel would drag along the surface if they were moving parallel to each other, as it's not turned tight enough to fit the tighter arc. This means you're scrubbing the tire across the surface for no reason, meaning you don't turn as tightly and you wear the tire more. So road cars use Ackerman steering, or often called positive Ackerman. This is when the inside tire turns more than the outside tire. This makes the car very maneuverable at high and low speeds, leading to predictable steering and low tire wear, as you're not dragging the tire across the tarmac unnecessarily. So Ackerman steering minimizes tire slip. Then there is anti-Ackerman, or reverse Ackerman steering. This is where the outside tire turns more than the inside tire. This leads to a lot of scrubbing, where the tire is being dragged over the track. And on a road car, this makes no sense at all. The car would be more difficult to drive at low and high speeds, and tire wear would be awful. Awful. And this is what F1 cars do. So why exactly do they do it? Well, that's a very good question. And before we get into that, I want to explain why exactly it's called Ackerman steering. It's actually named after the person who patented the design, an Anglo-German bookseller called Rudolf Ackerman, who patented it in 1818. However, he didn't actually invent it. That was actually a German carriage builder called George Lankensperger, I think, which took place a year earlier. It was actually Ackerman who just took all of the credit. Personally, I think Lankensperger is a better name for it. So back to why F1 cars use anti-Ackerman steering. To understand why they use this mechanism, you need to understand how F1 cars work their tires to produce grip, because it's all focused on maximizing grip. More grip equals more speed through the corners. We hear a lot about aerodynamic and mechanical grip on F1 cars being two separate factors, but really they go hand in hand. Aerodynamics are just really a tool to push the tires into the surface harder to produce more grip. Without the tires working correctly, the aerodynamics really don't mean much. So when in contact with a track surface, F1 tires slide across it very slightly, creating friction between the two, which then produces grip. What the aerodynamics of an F1 car do is help push that tire into the track surface, creating a lot more friction. The aerodynamics of an F1 car are so effective, it can produce over two tons of downforce through the tires. And at lower speeds, the car only has about 25 percent of the downforce, so of course you get less grip. Simple, right? Annoyingly for the F1 team, speed is not the only factor here. They also need to take into account the angle of the tires relative to the direction that it's going. This is known as slip angle. You need slip angle for the tire to produce lateral grip. But to make things even more confusing, slip angle can be both good and bad. So let's hand over to Scarbs to explain. So slip angle in a nutshell is something that again, get very complicated. So when you're steering a car around a corner, the angle that the wheel is actually turned at compared with the actual travel of the car is ever so slightly different. And that's what we call the slip angle, the difference between your steered angle and the direction of travel. Now, you have to have slip angle or else the car simply won't turn, but you can also have um, slip angle where it gets too much. And this really is where you start to get into, so we're talking about the front axle, for example, you're getting into understeer where you're getting too much slip angle and the car's going straight on rather than turning. And that can get to the stage, particularly with the unloaded inner wheel, where you get into you know, large amounts of slip angle and scrub. And with Formula One tires, maybe it's not so much in 2022, but certainly historically, that starts to create lots of heat on the inside tire also is a big contributor to things like graining with the tires as well. So slip angle can be good or bad, but you have to have some of it. It works like this. Look at this graph. Along the horizontal axis, we have slip angle. Think of this of how much we are pushing the front tire. At zero, we're putting no steering angle in. And at the maximum, we're pushing the tire too hard for the speed. 
Along the vertical axis is lateral force, so the turning force of the car. And of course, as a driver, we want as much of this as possible. To make this all make sense, we hopped into the sim, as it's a great place to see how it works. Here I'm driving in a circle, following the line so you can see what happens when you have too much slip angle. So keep an eye on the white line and the steering angle of the wheel. As the car accelerates and keeps close to the line, you can see I'm making small adjustments to the wheel, and the car and the tires respond by bringing the car back towards the white line without problems. This is because the slip angle is in the window where the tires are gripping to the surface. But if the driver puts in too much steering angle, it creates too much slip angle, which means that the tires can no longer grip into the surface and instead scrub across it. This causes the car to go straight on and the white line disappears out of sight. Essentially, we've fallen off the cliff of this graph when more slip angle doesn't create more turning force. So with all of this, why do F1 cars use anti-Ackerman steering? Just to remind you, anti-Ackerman steering turns the outside tire more than the inside tire. F1 cars use anti-Ackerman because for them, the outside tire is the most important for performance. As an F1 car turns, the weight is transferred to the outside tires, pushing the outside front tire into the ground more than the inside meaning that the outside tire can handle more slip angle before it's overwhelmed. And look at the graph again. With more load, you can add more lines, each being higher as you add more. So more force pushing the tire into the track means more cornering grip. Anti-Ackerman is particularly useful for going around tight corners as the outside tire is able to withstand more slip angle and produce more grip, getting the car to rotate much more effectively than if the tires turned in parallel or with positive Ackerman. On the other side of the car, this setup does doesn't increase the grip levels of the inside tire, but it does produce enough slip to warm the tire to keep it in its performance window, helping maintain consistent grip levels around the lap. So anti-Ackerman does create much higher tire wear, but the performance gains are larger still. So the F1 teams and the drivers just make do. Now we know how F1 cars manipulate their tires to gain performance, but go check out this video on why Sergio Perez is so good at keeping his tires alive, but still drives really quick. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.